Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on the Sig Sauer M400 AR-15 pistol. Now this is an older version of this model, and I know a lot of people are going to comment in this video when I talk about things about this gun I may or may not like, and they're gonna say, Jason, that's been changed, that's not correct. Now remember, I am not an FFL. I don't get the latest and greatest things, and they're not sent to me. Everything that is provided to the channel for range reports either comes from my personal collection or is lent to me by one of my friends. And this one is on loan from one of my friends. And he picked it up used at a gun shop. So I don't have the latest M400 tread. So when I review this gun, I am specifically reviewing the one that I have in front of me right now. So SIG may have changed a few things. I have to preface that because I know people will talk about that in the comments. This particular version has a delta ring with a quad rail, as you can see. And it has the Generation 1 SIGTAC brace. We now know these as the SB Tactical Braces. And this is the older style that went over a pistol brace. We now have ones like the SBA3 and the SBA4, which use a standard rifle buffer tube, which are adjustable. And this is actually going to be one of the things I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about in this range report. So as I mentioned, this is an older version of this particular gun. And I know that the M400 is supposed to be a budget or entry level AR-15 offered by Sig Sauer. Now, this is not the cheapest AR on the market, but for Sig Sauer, as compared to many of their other offerings, this is supposed to be their entry level affordable or budget AR. And for those of you who might know, this is legally a pistol here in the United States because it does have the pistol brace and an 11 and a half inch barrel, this is legally a pistol. I know a lot of people might say that looks like a short barreled rifle or a rifle. Well, it's legally a pistol. And I'm going to do this review, assuming as such, I'm not going to review this as a rifle. I'm going to talk about it as a pistol and its philosophy of use, possibly as a home defense or close quarters combat weapon. Now, with that said, let's talk about the things I like and don't like before we get to the shooting portion of the video. And I have to say, handling this gun, there is a lot about this gun that I really, really like. I'll start up here at the front with this quad rail. Now, I believe this is an original Sig Sauer quad rail. They have had many different four ends on these M400s. I've found many pictures and they're all different. Some of them have a quad rail that looks like this one. Some of them are a little bit different, but I believe this is an original SIG one because the cutouts look like the ones that are on the other SIG branded quad rails. I really like this because it is dehorned. And as a pistol, you cannot use a vertical foregrip. You can use an angled foregrip, but those people that just want to use this like a traditional rifle grip and grip over the rail, this is actually pretty darn comfortable. They've dehorned it. There are no sharp edges on it. It seems to be machined really well, and it is on the upper receiver really tight. I'm really impressed with its construction and design. Now, the thing I really like about this gun is the lower receiver. They really went, and for a budget AR, provided a lot of AMB controls. I'm going to show you the controls on this side of the rifle. You can see there is a magazine release and an extended bolt catch. That's really nice. On this side, you do have the AMB control for the safety selector, and you only have a magazine release. It would have been really nice if somehow they could have machined in a bolt catch on that side, then the lower would have been completely 100% AMB, but it is a budget lower, and you do get a lot of options with this, so I'm not really gonna fault them. It's way more than your standard mil spec lowers. The fit and finish on this gun is really nice. I don't really see any machine marks at all. I can tell it is a forged lower and upper receiver, and it is machined really, really nice. And the lockup between the upper and lower receiver is extremely tight. Now, when I do dry fire this gun, I can tell you another thing I really like about it is the trigger. Of course, I'm going to visually inspect the chamber. So as you can see, we are clear. And so now when I dry fire this, 
that is a really good feeling mil spec trigger. No, it's not gonna be some type of Timony trigger or some type of specialty target trigger. It's just a very nice mil spec trigger. There isn't really a lot of creep. The brake on it is really crisp. It might be a little bit on the heavy side, but it feels really good for a stock AR-15. And when I do take this gun apart, it looks like a lot of these parts have some extra milling on them. I'm pretty sure that they're MIM parts, but it looks like SIG took a lot of time in the creation of these. So I'm really happy with the trigger and the controls. Another thing about this lower receiver that's really nice is you have some QD mounts on the side, as you can see back here near the receiver extension, and those are ambi. So depending on how you want to use your sling, you have lots of options and you do have QD mounts here on the quad rail on both sides. Everything else about the gun really seems to be kind of stock AR-15. If you're used to AR-15s, it's gonna seem very logical and easy to use. And I guess the last thing that I wanna say that I wanna compliment SIG on is this grip. It is a really well designed and well thought out grip. It, it's a little bit bigger than your standard A2 grip, but it's larger right where you would want it to be. In fact, it reminds me a lot of the HK MR556 and MR223 grips. It has a nice bulge and ridge in the back and it really conforms to your hand exceptionally well. Now, when it comes to the things about this gun I don't like, I can only think of one thing, and that's gonna be this generation one pistol brace. It has a very short length of pull. Now I know what some of you guys are gonna say, is these pistol braces are not designed to be shouldered, and that is true, but the ATF says it is legal to shoulder them. So many times when people bought these pistols, it was understood that they were going to use them wrong and shoulder them. So if you bring this back to your shoulder, it's a very short length of pull, which was many of the complaints with the first generation SIG TAC or SB Tactical braces. And there were many devices and buffer tubes that came out that tried to fix this. And of course, now we have the adjustable ones, as I mentioned, with the SBA3. So I think that's gonna be the biggest issue when I get it to the range, because I will shoulder it. There is an option, if you don't wanna shoulder it, to simply put your cheek right on the side of the brace, and some people find that to be just fine and works good, because you do get a second point of contact to stabilize the gun. And with a 5.56 cartridge, these guns don't recoil very much, so you don't really have to worry about the gun coming back into your shoulder. But naturally, a lot of people are going to want to shoulder these. All right, so with that said, and telling you about the things I like and don't like and my initial impressions, let's put a magazine through this thing at the range. These are gonna be my first rounds at about 15 yards, and because this is designed as a pistol, I'm not gonna use this on a rifle range. I'm not going to bench rest it. I'm going to use it as kind of like a sub gun or a pistol caliber carbine, something that you might have at your house for home defense. So I'm gonna shoot it offhand. First magazine, 15 yards, and let's see how I do. All right, so I'm really happy with that first magazine. It is a really tight group. I'm just using the old Magpul Imbus flip-up sights. 
Really happy with those. And those are the types of sights that I think came on this firearm originally. I'd have to check. But SIG has come out with so many different variations of this gun, I can't really be sure. I have to say shooting it, the handguard is as I expected. It wasn't really uncomfortable because it is dehorned. It is a low recoiling gun and the report of the gun is really soft. I was really expecting it to be a lot louder because it's only an 11 and a half inch barrel and you're shooting 5.56. Five, that can get really loud. Some of you guys are gonna wonder what the muzzle device is on this. This is a Yankee Hill machine. I believe it is designed for the 30 caliber suppressors because it's a little bit longer, but it is just a flash hider. The only issue that I really had, as I mentioned before, was the length of pull. You had to see me stop there for just a moment and I had to adjust my hearing protection. In order for me to get a good view of the sights. I have to get my head really low and was rubbing up against my hearing protection just because the length of pull is so short and the top of this brace is so big. Now modern SB tactical braces have addressed this and they are different, but when it comes to these first generation ones, that's just something that you have to deal with unless you can use one of the buffer tubes that is a little bit longer with the spacer so you can get the length of pull a little bit further. So for me, it makes the gun a little bit uncomfortable to shoot, but the gun functions flawlessly and in every aspect of the gun, including the trigger, I'm extremely happy with. It's only this brace. And to be honest with you, this is one of the reasons why when it comes to my guns, I always SBR. I know that's not an option for everybody, but people ask me that all the time. Why don't you just put a brace on it? Why do you spend the money on the tax stamp? Well, it's because I wanna get rid of the brace issue. And I'm legally allowed to have them here in the state of Texas, so it's just what I choose to do. But I do appreciate people that want to use the braces and I understand their validity. All right, so next up, we're going to do what I refer to as the accuracy portion. Now, I know I'm only on a pistol range for this range report, but remember, I'm reviewing this as a pistol and a weapon you might use for close quarters combat and defending your house. So I'm gonna put the target out to 25 yards. I'm just going to shoot it offhand. I'm gonna shoot 10 rounds, go for the head on this IDPA silhouette target, see how much my group opens up because this is the type of shooting that I would do if I had to defend my home. So let's see what happens to the group and if this gun can shoot accurately at that yardage for my type of shooting. All right, so for 25 yards, the group opened up just a little bit, but for the most part, everything was on target. I'm really happy with the performance and the reliability of this gun, and I'm really happy with SIG's trigger in this. Now, when it comes to the performance, the gun does not seem to be over or under gas. It seems to be just right. Many times when it comes to these shorter barrels, that can be an issue with reliability. If a gun is over gassed, you smell it, you feel it in your face. If a gun is under gassed, you can have short stroking. So to really get these shorter barrels to run reliably can be kind of tough. And I think SIG really did a nice job on this. And I know some people may ask, this is a carbine length gas system. All right, so next up, I wanna give my wife a shot at this. She loves AR-15s, but I don't know if she's gonna like this just because of this brace. She is left eye dominant, so every time she shoots a rifle, she really needs to get her head over. She likes to shoot right-handed, but her eye placement has to be really far to the right. So I think she's really gonna struggle with this. In fact, I think she even has to shoot it with her right eye. And when she held it here at the house, she didn't like the length of pull, but I think she's gonna do just fine. But let's see what she thinks.
Okay, so when she got done shooting, the first thing she said was, man, I like the smell of that gun. I know, my wife loves the smell of shooting ranges, and she loves the smell of AR-15. She loves the smell of burnt powder. She always tells me she wishes she could find a candle that was scented in that smell. Man, am I lucky or what? But for her, she did complain about the length of pull. It wasn't very comfortable for her, but she said the gun recoiled perfectly for her and it was a very accurate and fun gun to shoot. She just prefers the SP Tactical A3 braces, which can come out a little bit further. And this also dispels one of the anti-gun myths. My wife is pretty small, and she can handle this gun just fine. Many times anti-gunners will say the AR-15 is so loud and the concussion is so big, it's such a powerful rifle, it's too big, it's too powerful. And my wife is sitting there shooting it with no problem whatsoever. I absolutely love that. So, now I'm gonna see if I can shoot this gun fast. I always like to call this the defensive use. As I said, I always do this in my pistol reviews, but this is a pistol, as I mentioned. Now, I'm not gonna be doing a mag change in this, but what I am gonna try to do is see how fast I can shoot this trigger. Now, I'm not going to do a mag dump, but I am gonna try to do some quick two, three, and four shot bursts. I really think with this trigger, and as good as it is, I think I'm gonna get some good speed on this. So let's see how I do. So even though the gun is a little bit uncomfortable for me to shoot and it rubs up against my hearing protection and I have to be careful about that, I don't want it to move, I can shoot this gun really fast. I honestly think that when it comes to this gun, the trigger is the absolute best part of it. It is just a fantastic out of the box trigger for an entry level AR-15. So what are my final thoughts on the SIG M400 pistol? Well, I have to say, I am really impressed with this gun. The only thing about this gun I don't like, and if this was my personal gun, this buffer tube would be coming off. I would add a standard buffer tube with the SBA3 brace on it. But everything else I talked about earlier in this video about the positives of this gun remain the same. The handguard is very comfortable even though there's nothing on it, no type of grips or rail covers. SIG has really done a nice job of dehorning this. The gun, of course, is low recoil. It seems to be reliable. I'm really impressed with the lower receiver and all of the controls. I'm impressed with how the gun is finished and the fit of it. It is just really, really tight. I absolutely love this grip, love the trigger and the gun ran reliably. It is just a fantastic entry level or budget AR-15. And if you're somebody that's looking for a lower end AR-15 and not looking to spend too much money, I would definitely look at the SIG M400 series. I believe today they call it the Tread is the model name, but this is just the standard M400. And I'm assuming many of the options that are on this gun transfer to the more modern versions of this gun. And I think they offer it both in rifle configurations and pistol configurations. But this being an older one, I only imagine that they have improved it since its introduction. And this is already a fantastic pistol. So on my star system, how would I rate the SIG M400 AR pistol? Well, the only thing, as I said, I don't like about it is this brace, and I can personally change it. But when it comes to these Ranger ports, I always review the guns as they come into the Texas Gun Vault for review. So I have to review it with this particular brace and all of these options. And with all of that said, I give this gun a solid four out of five stars. If it had the SBA3 on it, it might be an absolutely perfect review. But the length of pull is just too short. I feel like my face is too close to the action of the gun and it's really hard for me to see the sights with hearing protection on. So four out of five stars. Otherwise, it'd be a perfect score if this was an SBR or if this had the SBA3 brace on it. So yeah, this is just one awesome, awesome AR-15 pistol. 
and the fact that it is an AR-15 and being like Legos for adults, anything on this that you don't like, you can change out, you can upgrade pretty easy at a pretty low cost. And for the most part, you can do it at home. So this is a fantastic platform. I think if you bought this, there really isn't much you're going to want to upgrade, but if you wanted to, it'd be cheap and easy. So there you go, my review of the SIG M400 AR-15 pistol, 11 and a half inch barrel, early version configuration with the Delta Ring and the quad rail. They do have much better options now with M-Lock, I believe they offered key mod for a while and things that look like maybe they were monolithic. I don't think they were monolithic, but a lot more options today and of course better brace options. So there you go. The SIG M400 AR-15 pistol. You guys own one of these of any generation? I would love to know your thoughts and see if they echo my experiences. So let me know in the comments section below and as always, Thanks for watching.